Hey guys, welcome to our channel and in this video you're going to take the brain disease quiz part one which is a little bit of a difficult exam but if you need time just pause the video to read through the questions carefully. But before we get started I want you to like and subscribe to this channel because that helps us uh, with the YouTube algorithm and it lets us know that you value these videos. Let us begin. Gradually increasing pain and weakness and numbness in the hand or wrist that radiates the arm suggests A. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis B. Carpal tunnel syndrome C. blotch Schlussberger syndrome D. Dystonia Question two, all of the following may be associated with Guillain-Barre syndrome except A, weakening or tingling sensation in the legs, B, weakness in the arms and upper body, C, nearly complete paralysis, D, first symptom is altered mental status. Question three, Huntington's disease is a heritable disorder that involves A, sudden paralysis, B, chorea, loss of cognitive abilities and emotional disturbance, C, uncontrollable swearing and repetitive actions, D, inability to recognize faces. Question four, Heschi's gyrus is associated with which of the following? A, primary visual cortex, B, primary auditory cortex, C, secondary auditory cortex, D, somatosensory cortex. Question five, if brain damage involves structures surrounding the cribiform plate, it is likely that which cranial nerve would be involved? A, olfactory, B, optic, C, facial, D, hypoglossal. Question six, which of the following is not characteristic of multiple sclerosis? A. Dysarthria B. Aphasia C. Nystagmus D. Tremor Question 7 Amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles are the hallmarks of A. Alzheimer's disease, B. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, C. Ataxia telogenesthesia, D. Autism. Question 8. The most common form of transient facial paralysis is A. Alzheimer's disease, B. Transient ischemic attack, C. Bell's palsy, D. Herb's palsy. Question 9. The primary visual area lies along the A. Calcarine fissure, B. Central sulcus, C. Sylvian fissure, D. Lateral fissure. Question 10. Broca's aphasia is commonly accompanied by which of the following? A. Right hemiplegia, B. Contralateral superior quadrantinopsia, C. 
Gertzman's syndrome, D, right visual neglect. Question 11. Which region of the brain seems to be involved both in habit learning and in OCD? A. Amygdala B. Caudate C. Hippocampus D. Dorsolateral prefrontal cortex Question 12. Which of the following is not one of the more common symptoms or signs of the elevated intracranial pressure? A. Headache. B. Generally altered mental status, especially irritability and depressed level of alertness and attention. C. Focal cortical symptoms such as aphasia. D. Nausea and vomiting. Question 13. Which statement is correct? A. In multiple sclerosis, intellectual changes typically develop later than physical deteriorations. B. In Alzheimer's disease, intellectual changes typically develop later than physical deteriorations. C. In cerebral vascular accidents, CVAs, physical deteriorations typically develop later than intellectual deteriorations. D. In Parkinson's disease, physical changes typically develop later and intellectual changes. Question 14. Which brain region is most often affected by hydrocephalus? A. Posterior regions. B. Frontal lobes. C. Temporal lobes. D. All of these are equally affected. Question 15. Gait difficulties, urinary incontinence, and cognitive decline are highly indicative of which condition? A. Pseudotumor cerebri. B. Subdural hematoma, C. Tonsillar herniation, D. Normal pressure hydrocephalus. Question 16. Cerebellar pathways affect all but one of the following A. Motor learning, B. Balance. C. High order cognitive processes. D. Anosomnia. E. Respiratory movements. Question 17. Lateral cerebellar lesions primarily affect A. Trunk control. B. Posture and balance. C. Motor planning. D. Gait. Question 18. A person who cannot identify an object by touch may have A. Anomia. B. Associative agnosia. C. Aristognosis, D. Alexia. Question 19. A right MCA stroke in the distribution of the inferior division would most likely cause A. Left hemi neglect, decreased voluntary movements, and left sided weakness. B. Left hemi neglect, decreased tone and left sided weakness. C. Left hemi neglect, 
decreased tone and relatively normal left-sided strength, D, left hemi neglect, decreased voluntary movements, and relatively normal left-sided strength. Question 20. All of the following statements about amyotropic lateral sclerosis are true except A. It causes degeneration and death of upper and lower motor neurons. B. Patients lose strength and control of voluntary muscles. C. It impairs cognition and senses. D. It progresses rapidly and is fatal. E. Hormones. Now it's time to check your answers. Now this was a little bit of a challenging quiz, so hopefully you were able to stop the video along the way to read through the questions and provide the best answer. Now before we move on, I just wanted to make sure that, you're, that you like and subscribe to this video, so that way it helps us with the YouTube algorithm and it lets us know that you like these videos and we should continue making more. Question one, gradually increasing pain and weakness and numbness in the hand or wrist that radiates up the arm suggests B, carpal tunnel syndrome. Question two, all of the following may be associated with Guillain-Barre syndrome except D, first symptom is altered mental status. Question three, Huntington's disease is a heritable disorder that involves B, chorea, loss of cognitive abilities and emotional disturbance. Question four, Heschi's gyrus is associated with which of the following? B, primary auditory cortex. Question five, if brain damage involves structures surrounding the cribriform plate, it is likely that which cranial nerve would be involved? Answer is A, olfactory. Question six, which of the following is not characteristic of multiple sclerosis? Answer is B, aphasia. Question seven, amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles are the hallmarks of A, Alzheimer's disease. Question eight, the most common form of transient facial paralysis is C, Bell's palsy. Question nine, the primary visual area lies along the A, calcarine fissure. Question 10, Broca's aphasia is commonly accompanied by which of the following? A, right hemiplegia. 11, which region of the brain seems to be involved both in habit learning and in OCD? B. Caudate. Question 12. Which of the following is not one of the more common symptoms or signs of elevated intracranial pressure? C. Focal cortical symptoms such as aphasia. Question 13. Which statement is correct? A. In multiple sclerosis, intellectual changes typically develop later than physical deteriorations. Question 14. Which brain region is most often affected by hydrocephalus? A. Posterior regions. Question 15. Gait difficulties, urinary incontinence, and cognitive decline are highly indicative of which condition? D. Normal pressure hydrocephalus. Question 16. Cerebellar pathways affect all but one of the following? D. Anosomia. Question 17. Lateral cerebellar lesions primarily affect C. Motor planning. Question 18, a person who cannot identify an object by touch may have C, esteroagnosis. Question 19, a right MCA stroke in the distribution of the inferior division will most likely cause D, left hemi neglect, decreased voluntary movements, and relatively normal left-sided strength. Question 20, all of the following statements about amyotropic Lateral sclerosis are true except C, it impairs cognition and senses. Hopefully you were able to get some of those questions right. This was a challenging quiz, but hopefully you were able to push through and learn something in the process. I want to thank you for playing this quiz. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. We will have more challenging brain disease quizzes coming in the future. We'll see you guys on the next one.